More has shown up. M-O-O-R-E, by the way. Thought I'd put that out there. You know, I had the good fortunes of, of playing uh, professionally with, uh, in the NFL with Barry Sanders. How many know that name? Barry Sanders. <laughs> Hall of Famer. The Lions had Barry at running back, but here's the thing that amazed me. They said, how can we uh, be a little bit better at that position? <laughs> now, that's an oxymoron, you know, if you've ever heard one. Be better at the running back position, and Barry Sanders is your running back. You, can you get any better than that? Uh, can I give you a quick Barry Sanders story? I've got a thousand of them, by the way, but I'll give you one. I walk into the Lions organization, and it's amazing. Wayne Fonts is our head coach, and I got there, and I said, Coach, his office, he had two offices, one in the executive suite area, the other just adjacent to the locker room. Well, I go to Wayne's office, and I said, Coach, you know, I've only been here a couple days, and I'm curious. I see my locker Derek Moore, and I see Barry Sanders. And I said, Coach, where are the other running backs? I said, I need to know that because uh, Barry Sanders is going to be a handful for me to compete with. It's going to be hard sitting him down, so tell me where the other jokers are. I'm going after them first. <laughs> well, it turns out Coach Fonts said, you don't understand. He comes from behind his desk, and he says, two running backs? He said, come here. He puts his arm around me, walks me to the locker room, points me over to my locker, and I lock it right next to the, one of the, the greatest running back I've ever seen in Barry Sanders. And he said, look across the room and tell me what you see. I said, coach, uh, I see my locker, Derek Moore. And I see Barry Sanders. He says, how many is that? I said, two, coach. We've already determined that. He said, no, you, you have bad math. I said, what are you talking about? He said, it's you, Derek Moore, and then it's Barry Sanders. I said, what do you mean? He said, you've got to count him seven times. Wow. But you know, they brought yours truly in and said, as great as Barry Sanders is, Hall of Famer, you know, just ran for 2,000 yards, and they said, hey, you know what? As great as he is, we can be better. Why can we be better? We know why. Because, you know, Barry had some limitations. Barry had some things that challenged even his great game. He had struggles in the red zone, goal line, and short yardage situations. And so they brought yours truly in, and they took out the greatest running back on the planet. And the first time they did that in the Silver Dome, the place booed me like crazy. <laughs> I said, hey, they're not very friendly. I'm on your team. I get to the huddle, Scott Mitchell looks at me in the huddle. He says, Demo, they call me Demo. He said, listen, here's now. He said, listen, you know who just went out of the game, don't you? Oh, yeah, I know. He said, listen, you're going to get the ball on 37 dive, get it in the end zone. He said, hey, because if you don't get it in, you won't ever get that shot again, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. I don't care if... The army was standing there. I was getting that ball in the end zone, baby. It was awesome. But he was incredible at what he did. They had momentum in Detroit, but how do you sustain momentum once you get it? And physics says that momentum is movement. It's not static. It's, it's dynamic. It moves. It has uh, uh, athleticism is what it has. It has tentacles. It doesn't stay in the same place. You know, momentum, once it gets going, you got to work to sustain it, but it's not static momentum. It is dynamic momentum as you go forward. So when you're shaping this future as potters, I want you to do something for me. I thought about this. I thought about it. When you're shaping your future, 
I want you to consider three things first. I want you to consider something old. I've often said, you didn't get here by accident. And we saw something old today visually also. Always consider something old, but also consider something new. And absolutely never consider anything borrowed. Did you get that? Real important as you are shaping this future and you're going forward. I think it's also, uh, the future has a lot to do with the formula, and that is all in the formula, that high success or highly successful organizations, I believe, have a formula for their success. And it's obvious that that formula has worked here at Coke. But this is about ongoing sustainable success. It's not just about today's success. Frank Gans, my special teams coach in Detroit with the Lions, used to call it ongoing skill development. It's what he used to call it. He'd say, Brother Moore, he called me Brother Moore in special teams meetings. He'd say, my good man, just because you did it yesterday does not mean it's not required of you tomorrow. Oh, man, I was celebrating today's and yesterday's successes. Oh, man, look at what I just did. Wow, boy, I'm really good. And Frank walks in the room and he looks at me. Oh, I know, my good man, Brother Moore, you're celebrating yesterday's successes, aren't you? I know what you're doing. Well, my good man, I want to talk about tomorrow's story. And he changed the dynamics of the meeting just that instantly. Well, I want to do five things for you, give you five things. I want to give you five things that are vital to getting just a little bit more out of what is already a great organization and team and even a great formula for, for success. I want to give you these five things and I want to give you four cores. Number one, I believe what you expect, you inspect. I believe that. But after inspection, there is direction. Know the who, the why, the what, the when, the where, and you'll always have direction. Yeah, it's good to inspect, but after inspection, there is direction. You've got to know where you're going. You've got to know who. You've got to know where. You've got to know when, and you've got to know why. And you've got to know it all of the time. Because of what the marketplace demands. Number two, if you're going to be consistent, you must be persistent. Consistency is the result of persistency. And, and the definition is continually, firmly, in a course of action, in spite of difficulty or opposition, and or even after great success. You've got to be persistent to be great even after you've had maximum success.